Carlos. What up, Jasmine? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm doing. I'm. I'm. I'm just kind of out of it today. What happened, child? Just nothing. Nothing too exciting. Just you know, regular stuff. But Isn't I'm the Mercury retrograde? You know, I'm not sure if I believe in that, but I think so. <laughs> Look at me trying to get myself together, child. From for Jasmine, honey, her two tone hair that I always love seeing at the Ralphs. Um, I, yes, I, I see. I see you at the Ralphs. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to talk to you. I am a fan. I don't think I think I interviewed you twice before years ago. I don't know if you remember. So I interviewed you. You in don't Atlanta. think I remember, Jasmine? Oh. I let me let me pause for the cause. Okay. I turned down some interviews a lot because I'm picky because people yeah. like to be messy. Yes. Um, you interviewed me the first season of Hollywood Divas, which was back in 2000 and I think 13. So that was seven years ago. And we were at the Grove, right? But, there, but, the, but I also interviewed you, I think, before um, in Atlanta. And I think you had just left um, either L Love and Hip Hop or Real Housewives of Atlanta. No, Love and Hip I think you had just left. It was, it was something... Something it was some drama going on with one of those shows you had just left. Okay. And I was not I'm not I'm just saying it was I remember it was some something going on around that time. I can't remember which show it was, but it was one of those and it was Atlanta. It was in Freddie O's, one of Freddie O's stores. Oh yes. Good memory. That was that was our first one. And I wore yeah. a blue cardigan and a white t shirt underneath it. You did, you did. Okay. So for all you people that don't know, Carlos King is an executive producer. He's a CEO. He's uh, behind some of your favorite shows right now, we have Love and Marriage Huntsville, Hollywood Diva, Styling Hollywood, which I loved. Is that getting a second season? You have to watch and see what happens. Okay, the next fifteen. Uh huh. You did Gucci and Keisha Kaur's, uh wedding special, and you've done other stuff. Housewives of Atlanta. Um, so that's that. But can you kind of? And I'm not going to take up too much of your time. But oh, no, you, I blocked all time for you, Jasmine. You okay, thank you. Thank you. So for those that aren't familiar with you, can you kind of give us some background as to how you kind of got started in the reality TV, non-scripted sort of world? Yeah, well, long story short, um, I had a job at BET working on um, a few BET shows back in 2008. And then a friend of mine named Joy Chen said, because you love reality so much and because The Hills is your favorite reality show, I have an opportunity to do this show about black women in Atlanta. Would you be open to doing it? It's reality. And I was like, I'm in New York City. I'm making money. I know where my check is coming every Friday. How can I turn that down? But I said, you know what? Let me take a leap of faith and do reality. And that show happened to be The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I did the first season of that show. Um, the first, second, third, fourth season, and the reality bug just kind of hit me and stuck. And it's interesting because growing up in Detroit, I had no idea I was going to do reality um, until I did Atlanta Housewives, and the rest is history, pretty much. What was your position um, at the Housewives when you first started? I was an associate producer. So okay. as an associate producer, what up, Roz? As an associate producer, my job was to work with the talent. And upon my first day, I was told by my boss, you are going to be responsible for this woman named Nene Leakes. Like, that's going to be the cast member that you're going to be responsible for. And I was like, all right, cool, OK. And then I met Nene Leakes, and I fell in love with Nene Leakes after two seconds of meeting her. And I told her after we wrapped our first season, I said, you need to buckle up because you're about to be a huge star. And you, she, you, you I, saw it then? I saw it then. I saw it then. And she was like, shut up, bitch. No, I'm not. And I said, no, you are. You're going to be a huge star. And there you have it. So you, since you brought up Housewives, a Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, do you think Nene should stay for the next season? I 
think Nini should be on as long as Nini wants to be on. Nini, to me, is an integral part to the show, and she brings something valuable to it, and she always, always have. Um, I think she's a fantastic reality star. I think she's one of the most iconic reality stars in the world. And when it comes to the success of Housewives of Atlanta, let's be clear, uh, and, and the girls would say this too, she definitely is partly responsible for the success of that show. So I know that the show has changed for her the past couple of seasons, which is why yeah. my answer is if she wants to come back, yeah, but I will always be a Nini fan, and she is beyond iconic. Do you um, do you all talk like, you know, you're not like, you're talk, not with Tony anymore. I talk to Nini every other week. I was, oh. I me and Nini talk all the time. Okay. I talk, okay. I talk to Nini all the time. I talk to Kenya all the time. I talk to <laughs> Portia all the time. Yeah, the the thing about it is. The relationship that I've had with those girls, we all were truly, truly in love with each other and friends. And regardless of what people want to say in the blogs, there was such a respect that we all had for each other that when I left the show after producing it for nine seasons, the friendship did not go away. It stayed. And I, I talked to them all the time, all the time. What was your favorite season? My favorite season is season six. What Se happened in season six? Season six is the most iconic season in the history of Atlanta Housewives. It's also the highest rated season ever. And what happened that season was um, <laughs> Nene oh. had this pillow talk event. And a big fight happened between Apollo and Kenya's friend. Um, the reunion is when Portia, Kenya had an altercation. Um, but outside of that, it was a great season because you got a chance to see Mama Joyce. Um, she tried to throw a shoe at Carmen. <laughs> Carmen. Carmen. Carmen, you, you got Candy's hair in your head because that's all you be still in. Mama Joyce became a star. And I remember calling Mama Joyce when I came back on the show. I said, you should be on this season more often. She's her exact words, baby, whatever you need. I said, oh, those are like bells ringing. Oh, baby, bells and whistles and all those things. Um, if you were still part of Atlanta Housewives, would you bring back Phaedra? Yes, I think Phaedra is also iconic. Phaedra is. <laughs> she's a Southern Belle that also provides you with great. <laughs> the thing about Phaedra that people love, that I also love, is the fact that she was such a contradiction of herself, right? She was a church lady who wore the church hats, and she was a Southern Belle. But she also used to wear the freakiest bikinis when we had the cast trip. And she liked talking about sex and, you know, like, all of those things that she she had going for herself is what kept the audience at the tip of their toes. And she she's a dynamic force in this game. And, you know, I, I see why the fans want her back. I, 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 I get it. Switching gears here in terms of, like, reality TV overall, what's a typical day like for you? What When it's not the pandemic going on, when it's not going on, what is it like? It doesn't like the, listen, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. The pandemic hasn't slowed me and my team down at all. We have been busier, if you will. Okay. One, of, one of the things about producing reality TV is we're able to shoot within the confinements that may happen in our lives. And the pandemic obviously is awful and people are losing their jobs and it's, it's unfortunate what's been happening which is why I, I seriously thank God multiple times a day that I'm still able to work and that my team is able to work and that we're, yeah. we are still able to provide content for you. So a typical day for us is I get up at 5.45 in the morning. I work out. I get my mind together. I'm in the office by 10 a.m. And I'm home by like 7, 7.30, just in time for a family feud. <laughs> 
I got to watch Family Feud. So I have to be at home. It's time for Family Feud. Steve Harvey okay. is the greatest host of all time. So that's what we do. But in the midst of those hours, Jasmine, is tons of phone calls. It's tons of meetings. It's talking to the network. It's watching episodes. It's making sure that we have what we need to produce great shows. And what we do is a lot of work, which is why I get upset when people think, oh, all they do is put drinks on the table and have girls throw it at them. Like, that's not what we do at my company, Kingdom Rain Entertainment. We really are invested in providing good shows for everyone to watch. Okay. Well, is is the is this pandemic going to change how you guys, because maybe you're not shooting. Are you shooting right now? At this very moment, July 16th at 4.12 p.m. You know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, how, no, okay, no, so I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to ask a leading question. I'm just trying to ask, is it going to change the dynamic of how you guys shoot? Because this probably will be going on for a few more months. So, yeah. Listen, safety comes first. So I'll say this much. Regardless of what state we're able to shoot, we are definitely going to abide by the state-ordered mandate in that particular state. So, you know, as long as we're able to shoot within our confinements, I think we'll be fine. Okay. Um, and I got this question a lot, uh, or the team did. What qualities do you look for in terms of casting? When I, Carlos King, is looking for a cast to produce a reality show with, you have to be able to say, mm -hmm. listen, I'm laying all of this out on the table. Like, I'm giving you my real. The problem is this. I get pitched a lot of reality people. Okay. I get pitched a lot of people who want to do reality TV. And unfortunately, they think you got to throw a drink, punch somebody in the face. You got to be somebody's, you know, significant other. And I don't look for none of those things. When I, I think Melody Hope's a good example of somebody who reached out to me to do a reality show and the rest is history. Right. So what I saw in her is what I like to see in everybody. Big personality. You have a life. You have something interesting going on in your life. You live in a a part of the world that people haven't seen before. You have an interesting story to tell. Right. I, I, I've been doing reality. I've been doing reality TV since 2008. So I've seen everything. I've seen it all. Yeah. And I know a phony when I see one. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I know within two seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at. <laughs> I'm pretty good at knowing phonies too, but I, I and I, yeah. you know, I know, I know when you're thirsty, I know when you're phony, and I know when you're real. So when I get pitched shows or people, it takes me, and I'm not BSing. It takes me ten seconds, and I'll do this. Okay, all right. So you're looking for someone that is authentic, has a good story to tell compelling being themselves okay gotcha yeah, and just have listen just be be <laughs> be yourself but be yourself in an amplified way with the volume turned up yeah be be interesting to look at because if if you expect me to take time out of my day to watch you on tv you better be worth it right because i got i got other things to do so if i'm going to take time out of my busy day I put the kids to bed, I fed the kids, I walked the dog, and I'm going to tune in 8 o'clock to watch you. You better be bringing something back to me that's worth it. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. That's fair enough. Can we talk about uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville? Of course. And you better have the breaking news today, Jasmine Brand. Listen, I done already hit up Melody and everything. Like, <laughs> did she respond to you? Of course she did. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like I'm what? Of course you did. <laughs> um, so wh what happens like when you are, you know, in the middle of a season and something big happens where one of your cast members files for divorce? Like, what do you, how does that do? Do you guys scramble? Like when there are big moments like that, how does that work? Because I'm a regular person. I don't work in, in that world. So let me tell you what I think happens in my mind. 
Okay. I think sometimes you get the heads up and sometimes you don't that somebody's filing for a divorce. And then I think maybe whoever her person is on the show, I feel like she contacts her and then I feel like you guys are like, well, can we shoot this? Can we figure out what's going on? Um, let's get creative. Can we shoot from like this is me? I'm a right. Okay, so that's what I think happens. Uh -huh. and, then, and then I think, I think if you have got you guys have already stopped filming, you tell her don't talk to anybody. We want to shoot this. We want this for the reunion. This is what I think happens. <laughs> okay, so what happens? Were you ever a reality producer? Because that you answered your own question. No. That's. Do you want to work for me? <laughs> <laughs> too much, you, you're too. You, you, you're too much. It's too much work. Reality TV. I can't do it. I think, you know, I think I would be good, though, on the low. I think I would be really good. Would yeah, be. I I, yeah, I think I'd be would really be. good. Um, everything you said is true. That That is what happens in most cases. Um, listen, in the case of Melody and Martell and Melody filing for divorce, people have to understand, I met them in 2014. And if you would have told me six years later that Melody would file for divorce, I would have said, child, please, they are beyond in love. I don't know the story just yet. Okay. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. But at the end of the day, we will follow everything in this authentic form. A lot of people are invested in their relationship. A lot of people are rooting for their marriage to work me included okay and at the end of the day i want both parties to be happy so without speaking too much on it only because i really listen the news just came out honestly and that's a lot to process and i yeah. haven't processed it yet but all i will say to you is we will do our best to tell the most authentic story that has happened and i, I i'm rooting for them okay um it seems like the husbands on the show are a lot more involved and vocal as opposed to the husbands on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Was that intentional or is that something that organically sort of happened? It was intentional. The other reason why season six of Atlanta Housewives was the highest rated season and iconic is because I made sure the men had a voice. It was the season Nene referred to Peter Thomas, Peter Thomas as Patricia because Peter was in all the women's business. And I like to follow real life. I have married friends. I have brothers who are married. I know that men have a bigger, if not the biggest opinion in the room. I wanted Love and Marriage Huntsville to be a show where the woman and the man have equal footing. You know okay. what I mean? I yeah. wanted it to be that. So the fact that that show is a hit is because it's not a show about women and the men doesn't have a voice. Atlanta Housewives season six was the same thing. It was, no, the guys have a voice. And I think people want to see that. They want to see how men feel in certain situations. And that's just real life. OK. Um, the show is on OWN. OWN doesn't have a lot of reality sort of to me, uh, reality shows so right. how did you how did you get it on there so long story short i pitched the show to own and they instantly loved it because they wanted to get their foot wet in a reality ensemble show and the fact that you have three successful good-looking black couples who are doing something great in their community in huntsville that is what that brand at that network is all about right giving back to your fellow community and because of that they bought the show and the show is something that they're all proud of it's a it's a huge hit for them right. and i'm blessed to be able to you know work work with my my peoples again um have you ever got any personal feedback from this show from oprah i mean i know you know her i mean i know you have worked with her before and all that kind of stuff you've yeah. seen the clips or i've seen the clips and stuff like that <laughs> Yeah. Have, have you ever got any feedback from her about she, the show? Yeah, she loves it. She loves it. Um, Yala Van Zandt even loves it. You know, listen, one thing about Ms. Winfrey is everything you see on her network, she watches. You know, it's it's her network. Right. Uh, she's super proud of the show. We are, we're doing more business together. I, I am fortunate to be able to continue to have this relationship with her. She's somebody who 
I'm adored since I was a, a boy in the D. So to be able to create shows for her with my team, it's, it's been the biggest blessing thus far. It really has been. Okay. I'm not going to lie. When I first saw the the, tra the trailers and the, not the trailers, but the name of the show, I was like, this look real dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was basing that on location. Yeah. Like, I was oh, no. like, this is looking. All good. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, this is why when you watch a show, the title should never matter, nor the location. What matters should be the person who's producing it. What matters should be the company producing it. Right. You know, my company has a history of making good television, knock on wood, that we still do. So even when I did Atlanta Housewives, right, I, listen, people know who I am because of that show. Yeah. What I did that was successful is I took that fan base mm -hmm. of that show and I said, I got something else for y'all. Come over here. And they watch Hollywood Divas. And they made Hollywood Divas a huge hit. Right. And they, they, keep, they, keep, they keep following me. So I think Love and Marriage Huntsville, a lot of it, besides my team and the work they did and the, and the cast, a lot of it was the curiosity that, oh, this is a Carlos King show, baby. What, what is this going to be? This, right. this, 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 this may be lit. Right. And people loved it. I know that you have said before that you, you're interested in going to other cities if the opportunity, or if it makes sense, or if, you know, if the opportunity presents itself. What other, ideally, what would be another city you would be interested? Detroit. You know, um, one of my girlfriends has a place in Detroit, and we were just in Detroit, and it's colorful. Oh, yeah. Detroit is, um, is really good. It's really good. Uh, that's my hometown, obviously. Yeah. So, um... I would love to see what Detroit has going on. Okay, all right. Um, would you would would you be interested in um, looking into Hollywood Divas again? Listen, that show <laughs> is. I, I get asked this question in terms of what is the what is your favorite show you've done, and I always right. tell people because Hollywood Divas was the first show my company produced, I will always say that. Okay. And it was terrifying because I did not know whether or not people would like it. I was scared. I was like, are people really going to be into this? And they, when I say people, I get asked about that show more than any other show I have done in my career. People right. love Hollywood Divas. I would love to bring it back, but I also would love to do more things in that space. Um, as well. I think Black women in Hollywood are very interesting, and I think they have a story that needs to be told. When you watch Beverly Hills Housewives and see what Garcelle Bouvet is bringing yeah. on that show, she's bringing something that you haven't seen before. And I think Black women in Hollywood, there's more stories there, and I want to be able to tell all of it. Okay. What about The Next Fifteen? Yes, I would love to. Listen, The Next 15 was a hit of its time. We had the Tiffany New York Pollard, Claudia Jordan, Jennifer Williams, Karama, who's on Queer Eye, and Bazina, like, and Laura Gavon. Mm -hmm. It was an iconic show. I think it was, you know, the right show, maybe not the right network because it wasn't, you know, seen as much, but people, mm -hmm. people love that show, and I would love to do something like that again. I would love to do a different iteration of it, but uh, the next 15 is, yeah. That was interesting. Um, what would you say, you know, as a, as a producer, as an executive producer of a reality show, what, do you, what are your thoughts about when people say like your types of shows or like Love and Hip Hops or Housewives of Atlanta, they're, you know, they're damaging to the i guess black community what do you what is your response to that kind of thinking yeah the, the thing is this i think it's very funny how when it comes to anything a black person does everybody expects things to be done with the most earnest safest way i think it's sad that white girls on reality tv can flip a table and throw up on the beach and run down chasing somebody and they're called iconic when a black woman does the same thing, she's called ratchet. You know, when a black man pr produces a show, I'm called messy. 
you know, what a lot of people don't know, Jasmine, is 99.9% .9 of those black shows you call, you call Ratchet, they're produced by white male production companies. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So people love to just attach the Ratchet name onto anything black. I think you get this a lot, and I think Mona gets it a lot, too. Yeah, we both get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's funny is those white men don't get it, and they're the yeah. ones who's producing it. Yeah, I did not create Atlanta Housewives. I was hired to produce that show. And the moment I was in the driver's seat, people said, like, oh, peop you know, this cast is well-rounded. This, we're real Wait, you really talking about Phaedra and Apollo's marriage? Wait, you really talking about Mama Joyce not liking Todd and, and Candy's in the middle of that? Wait, you really talking about Kenya having issues with her mom and her father you brought on candy's baby daddy like no one talks about the the positive stuff i've done right no one talks about that because it doesn't make good press all people want to talk about is oh they're ratchet they set the black movement back no one talks about that with scripted all these scripted shows y'all watch where people are busting them guns and it's thug is ruggish bone and you got somebody sleep with the president all that that, but that, that's entertaining and that's scripted. How is that powerful? At least they have the power of the pen to write a different script. I right. don't have that luxury. I have to follow what's presented to me. And what I try to do as a black man in this business is really make it more diverse. The moment I started my company, Jasmine, I haven't had one fight on a show. Really? <laughs> there was no fight on Hollywood Divas. There was no fight on the next 15. There was no fight on Styling Hollywood. There was no fight on Love and Marriage Huntsville. I really like Styling Hollywood, FYI. Yeah, there's no fights on it. But no one, no one, wants, to, no one wants to say like, oh, he really is growing in, in the way he tells stories. Oh, he really is trying to, trying to shift the image a little bit. You know what I mean? No one wants to talk about that because that's not good. They want to call me messy. Does that bother you? It used to. It okay. used to because I'm none of those things people say about me. None of those things. Okay. So, of course, it used to. But when you realize that, listen, the things that I do and the shows that I produce and the team that I work with, I know the conversations we have behind the scenes. And it's like we really take inventory of, like, who we're putting on TV. I cannot tell you. Let me let me give you an exclusive. Every single black female reality star has contacted me to work with me. Whether or not they were on the show or off, 99% of them because they know what I do in this industry. When you think about what Ava's doing in Black Hollywood, what Tyler Perry's doing, it, it, it's beautiful, it's amazing, and there's synergy. When it comes to Black reality shows, people really do want to work with my company and work with us because they, the word is out on the street of reality TV. They're like, no, that Carlos, I get so many DMs from people like, can, I, can, can you please look at my contract? Can I, can I get out of my contract and work with you? Can you, can you please um, put me on lows? Can you, can you, I get that a lot sure. and i take i i really i turn down more people than you think no i'm not surprised yeah. because i look at it like is are you are you good for what we're trying to do with the company or do you represent something interesting or so i i do take it seriously so because i know that's what we do i don't take offense to the perception that people have of me i don't really give a damn okay um, let me ask you this. So we recently did a story. We interviewed Mariah Huck from Married to Medicine. Who I love, by the way. I, I, I really like her, too. Um, Kaya Wright said, can you please put me on Los? Um, Kaya and I work <laughs> in the same building, and I love her. Oh, you're in that building, too? Okay. Um, so, so, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we interviewed Mariah Huck, and she was talking about the fact that um, she's considering taking legal action because you know she created the show 
she feels like she's not a lot of the same opportunities as other white people on Bravo, like Lisa Vanderpump, who have created shows. And it's never a question as to whether or not um, they're coming back. What are your thoughts about that? Listen, I truly don't know the particular details of what Mariah went through on that show. The only thing I could tell you is that Mariah is telling the truth in, in, in the sense of that's her show. She created it. Right. What a lot of people don't know is Mariah Hook, we were looking at Mariah to be an Atlanta housewife during season four. She said that she was approached by uh, Atlanta She housewife. was. I was like, ooh, who are you? Yeah. She fits, I feel like. I, I remember shooting a scene with Mariah, her sister. Is it Lyric? Her sister Lyric, I think that's her name. Lake, Lake. I'm Lake, sorry, Lake. Lake, yeah. Mariah, Lake. I shot a scene with Mariah and Lake for Atlanta Housewives. I love Mariah. Yeah. Mariah said to another producer, you know what? I want to create my own lane. And she created Married to Medicine. I wanted Mariah to be an Atlanta housewife. Got it. Because I, I know a star when I see one. And no one reads like Mariah Huck, baby. No one. So long story short, she created her own destiny. And she created Married to Medicine. And it's funny because I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, man, why are you gonna pitch that to me? <laughs> have... Right. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great show. So, you know, listen, I, I feel bad for what she's going through. I don't know the details because I'm not involved in it, but I would love to see her back on the show. Mariah, Mariah is to marry to medicine what Nene is to Atlanta Housewives, what Giselle is to Potomac, what Jocelyn was to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like, it's, we're talking about Mariah Huck. Right. Yeah. We're talking about an underrated <laughs> icon. We're talking about a woman who said, I got the receipts. <laughs> I got the receipts, baby girl. If you want them, baby, I got the receipts. <laughs> I remember texting Mariah like, that. If, she's the on this, if, if Mariah isn't on Marriage Medicine this, this upcoming season, it's going to be interesting because she brings something. And this is what I told Dr. Heavenly. Because Dr. Heavenly asked me, I did an interview with Dr. Heavenly and Melody Holt a few Saw months it. ago. Saw it. And yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm teasing. And Dr. Heavenly asked me, do I feel like somebody from Marriage to Medicine should be gone. Who do I think should lead the show? I said, in my opinion, Married to Medicine is one of those very few shows where all of you girls need each other. Okay. That is a true ensemble show. Mariah, Quad, Dr. Heavily, Dr. Jackie, Toya, Contessa, Simone, in my opinion, they all need each other. And the problem that I do have with most cast members is when they think the show belongs to them. The show is ensemble for a reason. The yeah. reason why season nine of Atlanta Housewives is also iconic. What up, Tasha Page Lockhart? The mm -hmm. reason why season nine of Atlanta Housewives is so iconic is because, to me, it's the first season besides six where everybody played a crucial part in the show. And I'll, I'll end by saying this. Y'all need to be careful who y'all kick off of a show or y'all need to be careful who you want to be off of a show because y'all may have an argument. And this, I'm talking about cast members. Yeah. Cast members need to look at the bigger picture. Your show is only good when it's an ensemble cast. The moment one person is plucked out of it, your show's gonna flop, baby. Don't do it. Well, I feel like what you just said is kind of what Nene echoes sometimes. Even when she's beefing with King Kenya, I feel like she still says, I think she's good for the show. I don't want to film with her sort of thing. Let me tell you one thing about Nene Lee. <laughs> I'll give you another exclusive. Because I like you. 
Um, people swore up and down that me and Mimi had beef because Claudia Jordan was on the show and that I set up Mimi uh, by bringing on Claudia. Like, oh, okay, okay. Stupid stuff. That iconic moment in Puerto Rico where Mimi and Claudia had that clash. What y'all don't know, because I love to talk about Nini hated Claudia. Nini wanted Claudia fired. Let me tell you how much of an icon Nini Leaks is. After that scene in Puerto Rico, Nini came to me and said, baby, that's the one. And I said, what do you mean? She said, Claudia. That's who you need to be watching. And I said, you, you, you think so? She said, no, she's good. She's good. She's good. Y'all got the right one, baby. Y'all got the right one. And that goes to show you, stop thinking Nene um, doesn't put the interest of the show first. She does. She had an iconic reading session with Claudia Jordan and said to me afterwards, that girl is it. Because one thing about the Atlanta Housewives at least when I was on it. One thing about that show is those girls respected you more if you could hang with them. Yeah. Because they feel like if you on this show, you got to you gotta earn your keep. Right. And Claudia earned her keep and that peach. And yeah, me, Claudia has a mouth. She can, she, she has a mouth. She does. <laughs> and me, listen, and me, listen, Nene, Nene always wants what's best for the show. Nene feels like if you're not bringing anything to the table, why are you around us? You know, and I, and listen, I feel the same way. <laughs> right. But I feel like you're biased with Nene, though. I'm not. That's what <laughs> listen, this is why I think you're biased because I feel like. Well, I don't know if bias is the word, but you have insight because you have a relationship with her. You know those moments that you've had with her behind the scenes. You know what she does behind the scenes that, that we don't get to see. So I feel like you're in that bubble. So I feel like, I don't know if bias is the right word, but you have a different perspective on her as a regular. I don't have opinion one way or another. Oh, but yeah. as, a, as a viewer, you see, I mean, I see, I don't see all of that. I don't see that she, you know, had a conversation with you and bigged her up behind it. You, know, you get what I'm saying? Like, we don't get to see that as a viewer. No, it is. And yes, Nene did block me on Twitter. I was just about, uh, to, I was just about to read that. <laughs> yeah. No, because we had our ups and downs, such as life. Yeah. But no, because I, I get, listen, I get, I, I'm very defensive when it comes to anybody I work with. Because, again, a lot of people like to run with the narrative because it's interesting. And it's not. Um, so when people say Nene wants people fired or she doesn't want what's best for the show, I can only tell you by my personal conversations with her, she's always put the show first. Always. Like you said earlier, we, we know her and Kenya don't like each other. <laughs> and right. they probably never will. Right. But, she, but she, she always said Kenya is good for the show. She always said that. Always said that. And all of those girls <laughs> feel the same way about each other. They feel like, let's, we may not be the best of friends, but you're good for the show, so let's work together. Do you think that um, Marlo will ever get a full-time status sort of situation? You know what? I think it's time for her to get one. I, I've, I've seen how the fans have responded to her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see why not. But again, um, I, I, I think Marlo... Listen, Marlo is the most iconic friend <laughs> to ever be. Right, that's true. Kyle, I have never seen a friend <laughs> be so iconic. <laughs> Marlo is the definition of an iconic friend, baby. She is. Um, okay, so Tamar Braxton was tweeting the other day about... You know, um, I love her, right? You love Tamar? She loves me, too. Uh, you have a type. What, what is that? Loud, 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 colorful reality stars. You have a type. Who wants to watch somebody um, boring and Listen, quiet? Listen, I, can, I, can, I, I, like, I like watching them on TV. I also like a more mild-mannered reality star. I, can, I, can I don't. 
Candy gives me mild. She gives me, she goes up sometimes. She's even Steven. I Can like her. Mild. To me, <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, she's kind of mild, not boring, but kind of like she's not yelling, cussing. I like her. I can take the ninis. I can take a little bit of everything. I don't need all that all the time. But okay. I'm boring. I see what you mean because I, I, I consider myself to be boring. I don't really, yeah. you know me, I don't, I don't go nowhere. I stay home. I, me too. I, I, stay, I stay out of the way. Me you run into each other at the grocery store every weekend. Yes. We need low. Um... <laughs> Um, so Tamar Braxton, what she was uh, tweeting about uh, the the differences in um, compensation, and she kind of said something along the lines of like uh, they don't get, uh, uh, Braxton Family Values doesn't get paid like a fraction of you know like cart keeping up with the Kardashians and stuff like that. Um, have you ever experienced anything like that in terms of like what you get receive compensation or whatever in terms of like white production companies? Is that a thing in, ter in, in your lane? That is a good question. When it comes to what Tamar was talking about, because her show is produced <laughs> by a production company and it's a network. So all of that, I really, you know, I don't know yeah. all of that. Yeah. What, I can, what I can speak on is the fact that when it comes to Black production companies, we don't get our respect. You know, I am a owner of a Black production company, obviously, mm -hmm. and I don't get the same respect you know, if my... How so? Just by the type of feedback that I get or the type of the type of energy that I get, you know, it is hard for me still. Um, listen, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm favored and I have a lot yeah. going on. I'm thankful for that, but it's not easy for me. I think the biggest misconception is I'm Carlos King and it should be easier for me. I can tell you it is not. I can tell you as a black man in reality television, my white counterparts get way more shows greenlit than I do, regardless okay. of who. You know, when you when you look at the resume that I have, I would be further along in my career if I wasn't black with my resume. Right. I, I would be as big as a Ryan Murphy. But when you are a black man in this business, you have to work twice as hard as we know. Yeah. And, and, and I don't let that slow me down. That's the reason why at the end of the day, I appreciate Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey has given this black boy an opportunity to work with her and to produce shows for her, which is why it infuriates me when people talk about her because she talks the talk and she walks the walk. And this black woman who y'all love to talk about in a negative light is one of the few people giving black production company shows. So watch them out because at the end of the day, she's <laughs> and all of these networks I love to talk about. Yeah, a lot of them don't don't do don't do the same thing in the same spirit. Right. And I I'm 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 fortunate enough to be able to say, listen. When you work with me, we, we, we work really hard. And for us, it's the matter of, <sighs> you know, we got to show up and show out. But one thing that Jason Bolden said to me from Styling Hollywood, he said, only worry about the people who want you to be in the room with them. And you focus on them. Stop focusing on the people who ain't giving you shit. They're not. Why am I trying to prove myself? I have done some of the most iconic reality shows in the world. And I still have to prove myself as a business owner. And that isn't easy. So I appreciate what the Oprah Winfrey Network has done for me. And I'm happy to be able to work with them and other networks too. Who would you like to create a show with or about um good question i love tamar braxton mm -hmm. <laughs> um there's a couple of other people that is on my wish list and i'm working with them now so thank okay. you for working with me i would love to work with tamar braxton i i have been told 
that she wants to work with me too. And we follow each other on um, Instagram and I ran into her a few times and she loves, you know, we, we, we exchange pleasantries. Okay. But if I had to choose anybody on top of my head, I, I would love to work with Tamar Braxton. I think she is an iconic personality and I think she's one of those few people who, you know, who, who, who brings it. And um, I would love to create a show with her. She's hilarious too. I, I love her. I'm, a, I'm, able, I'm every time I, I every time I see her, I'm always. <laughs> I promise you, I'm always like this. Really? Please? Every time I see her, I be ducking her. She called you out yesterday because you were messy. Can I just say this? <laughs> she read the jazz, man. I have to laugh, and I love you. <laughs> she read Listen, you. listen. Um. I don't write for the site. I have a staff. I don't even know who wrote that story. But I still stand by it. <laughs> I stand by it. Let, let me tell you something. These celebrities that, that tweet these subliminal messages um, and, and they get interpreted any kind of way. I mean, look, if you say something about the real, real, and the day before somebody quit the real and they, you always having the drama with the real, I don't think it, and, and people's reactions to the tweet was they thought you were talking about the real. I don't like. What are, what are we supposed to do here? Like, what did you think was going to happen when you tweet that? Like, and and secondly, I, I don't give a fuck. Like, she, she can read me all day. Like, I don't care. I, first of all, I didn't even know she was talking about. Like, I don't care. Like, but you know what's so funny with that? Uh -huh. She said, don't try it, Jasmine. <laughs> and and a, a few people, I, you know, I'm not on, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't write. You know, I don't write. I don't write the stories. If it's like an exclusive, I'll be involved in stuff like that. I'll be working on ads and like different projects or whatever. So I'm not, because the site is called the Jazz Brand, people think it's me. And I never should have named it this. But, no, you know. it was good for your brand. Yeah, but it's just like, I don't, you know. No, I know. I, you know I'm teasing you, right? Yeah, no, I, no but it's, I'm glad that you said that because people be thinking that. Like, you know, jazz, and people be like reading me jazz, da, 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 and I'm like, what? No, and it's funny because sometimes I'll see stuff about me, then I'll be like, Jasmine. You're like, I didn't know. And I'm like, I don't even know. Like, and I'll have to go back, you know, and that's the thing is like, I'm always like, I should have named the site something else. But the thing is, it'll clear, the articles, the, the writers, it'll have their name there, but it's called the Jasmine brand. So, you know, I, I take it, but it's not. No, it's all yeah. good. I, and I tried to find it this morning because I was trying to have them add it to the story. She had deleted it. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Like, uh, I'll text it to you because I saved the child. We were texting. My yes, sister yes. like, Jasmine got red, baby. Yeah, I th yeah she, Jasmine. Don't it, the thing is, I'm not a, um, like, I don't read people. I'm not a, no. that's not my ministry. You know but what that's why you get the exclusives. Because yeah. people in the industry, we all know that you're of substance and that you're fair. You do fair reporting. I don't, I don't consider you a blogger, in my opinion. But right. I think you do fair reporting. You report the news, you report the facts, and you, you're not, your site isn't messy for the sake of being messy. Your site, it, it's the interpretation. If y'all think this is messy, it's only because y'all read into that that way. Well, and also, I, we try to be, we try to be fair and objective and neutral. We don't try to, like, insert our opinion. And, like, I don't consider us a blog. Like, you know, it's like 50, we got a staff of, like, 10 to 13 people right now. We pay taxes. I got a lawyer. It's me and a co Like, it's not... Like, this is not, you know, some kind of little hobby thing, you know, so like, but um, we try to, but we just try to be fair, you know what I mean? And and then also, like, I don't take that kind of, that's that kind of stuff personal. When people cuss me out, all that kind of stuff, like, it doesn't, you know, it's, and I, some people be like, well, we ain't never covering you no more, you know what I'm saying? Or we gonna, we gonna put all messy shit up, like, that's not, yeah, you know, it's not that serious. And, and we're, honestly, I don't really, I don't care, you know what I mean? So. Oh, I know you don't. You think you have to cross the store with me on the weekends. We don't exactly. go places. Okay, so who, and I feel like I already know the answer to this question. Who do you think is the queen of reality TV? Tiffany New York Pollard, no question. She's fucking hilarious. No question. <laughs> Tiffany New York Pollard started it all. She, she, listen, people may have come before her, but the way she cemented herself in this genre that wasn't popular, when you're able to cement yourself into a genre that was fairly new, and people still remember your one-liners. And when she said on my show that the next 15, I have an inner cry. That's why I, you don't see it. 
that's no one will ever be Tiffany, in my opinion. She's she said it with a straight face, too. Yes. And we all laughed and gagged and said. Right. Um, <laughs> what, um, what's your favorite reality show of all time? Of all time or yeah. current? OK. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All time. Ex excluding the ones I've done. Um, I really like Braxton Family Values. I love Potomac Housewives. You know, I don't really watch Potomac like that. You missing out. I, that's what everyone keeps saying. Okay, keep going. I told people in 2019, Potomac was the best reality show last year. And we'll see what they do this year. The best shows out now that I don't do is Potomac Housewives, Married to Medicine. I like Braxton Family Values. I wanted to come back, though. I do, too. I wanted to come back, too, although we, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, that's about it. Um, where do you see reality TV, reality TV heading in the next, I guess, 10 years? Listen, it's funny because me and you talked about this, I think, in 2010. And 10 years ago, it's still around and it's still huge. And yeah. I think in the next 10 years, it's going to get bigger. I want to be able to create more shows for you guys to watch. I still want to be able to, you know, diversify the portfolio of the shows we do, working with people of all races, sex, class, religion, et cetera, where mm -hmm. we have a, a healthy slate of things coming down the pipeline that I'm thrilled about. Um, yes, I do more than black shows, so you'll see that. <laughs> but there's nothing but there's nothing wrong with doing No, my company started because I wanted to do it and I still will do that. Um, but there's more than meets the eye when it comes to the work we're doing. And I'm, I'm looking forward for people to see what we have coming up soon. Okay. Is there anything we didn't talk about that you wanted to address? Love and Marriage Huntsville comes on every Saturday, 8 o'clock on OWN. The second episode comes on Saturday. Thank you guys so much. We got the ratings for Love and Marriage Huntsville today from the premiere episode. We had a double digit increase from oh, nice. season two premiere from season one premiere. Nice. So keep watching. We want to be able to continue, you know, um, increasing the number. So thank you guys for that. And this Saturday's episode, do not miss the last 15 minutes. That's all I'm going to say. Um. I want to. I want us to do this again towards the end of the season too. Okay. Me, you, yeah, we'll do this again at the end of the season if your if your schedule allows. Anything for Jasmine. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Carlos. We'll touch base soon, and I'll be tuning in on Saturday. All right, baby. Be good. Bye. Thank you. Bye.